let us all that we can to build a better future. And the thing is, it's hard to really tell the difference between both parties. And I've always heard from people who are diehard Democratic voters, they say the Republican Party is for fascism. They they stand against everyone. They stand against <clears throat> the LGBTQ community. They stand against immigrants. They stand against black people. But the thing is, I always counter back and say, but the Democratic Party does the same thing too. The Democratic Party has had a track record of selling out everybody, no matter what their demograph is or what generation they're part of or the color of their skin. And in the Roundaway podcast, a very interesting conversation took place. And there's a quote here. We often have nothing to vote for. I'm not against voting, but I will only vote when you give me a reason. Black people in America will never get anything when they vote. I want to pull this video up from Case Study QB. Please be sure to follow him on Twitter. He's done phenomenal work. It's important that we talk about the Democrats because Biden and the Democrats are in damage control and people want to see alternative candidates. They want to see the debate. Hashtag force the debate. Let's play this video for all of you. And again, please be sure to support Case Study QB. He is wrongly being censored. And so, how no, I, no, I believe in voting when I have something to vote for. Okay. The issue with electoral politics and black people, whether it's America, Africa, or the Caribbean, is we often have nothing to vote for. And the reason we often have nothing to vote for is this party and its so called antagonists, mm-hmm. this party, are both financed by that Chinese man. They're both financed by that white man. Yeah. They're both financed by that East Indian. Mm-hmm. So they got everybody running around Jamaica. Who are you going to vote for? Running around the United States of America. Who are you going to vote for? Running around South Africa. Who are you going to vote for? When at the end of the day, no matter who wins, he wins because he financed both campaigns. I'm not against voting, but I will only vote when you give me a reason. Okay. Let's take voting in America. Black people in America never get anything when they vote. So how do they motivate us to vote if we never get nothing when we do? Fear. Black people are the only constituency in this country who vote out of fear. In other words, I'm not voting to stop police brutality because they're not going to stop it. I'm not voting to change mass incarceration. They're not going to change it. I'm not voting to fix the schools. They're never going to fix them. So what you voting for? Because I'm afraid of what Trump might do. You see that? And that's a bigger picture, too. And I'd like to add more into that. The Democrats use that for their entire voting base. Fear. Fear of Trump. The fear of what the orange boogeyman will do. Now, I'm going to say something very controversial here. Trump has been the most transparent president we've had in our lifetime. He's told us how corrupt the system is because he used it to quote Dave Chappelle from that skit from SNL, to which he did say that. Hell, Donald Trump told the American people the truth during the first Republican primary debate in 2016. I give these people money and they do what I say. I give these people money and they do what I say. And those people being the politicians. Trump, after all, only recently became a politician. He was always financing campaigns. And it wasn't too long ago he was a Democrat and he was good friends with two people. You might have heard them, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. And it wasn't too long ago where Hillary Clinton was a senator for the great state of New York, a U.S. senator, by the way. And one has to ponder and wonder that when Trump gave her or any other Democrat lawmaker at the time money, did they do what he said? And the answer is yes. Yes. That's how the system is run. And I have heard from so many activists and organizers, especially from 2016 to 2020. I don't want to go on a rant here, but everyone was always saying if Trump gets into office, it'll be like Nazi Germany. If Trump gets reelected, that's the end of democracy. I'm going to let you all in a little secret here. Anybody can buy a U.S. politician. Anybody can interfere in an election. The United States does it all the time to other countries. But the Supreme Court of the United States, thanks to the, uh, Citizens United, the McCutcheon decision, they have legalized bribery. So everybody's for sale in the U.S. Senate and House. 90% of the time, your oh so fantastic Democratic Republican lawmaker is on the phone calling their donors for more money. And also, by the way, check out Unusual Whales because that Twitter account shows you what your fantastic U.S. Senator and U.S. House Representative are doing in regards to insider trading. By the way, they are making a huge financial killing 
all of them, both parties. I'm going to rewind this again because we have to hear this out. It doesn't matter where you stand in this country, what state you live in. The DNC is going to use fear. So be ready to see all the propaganda saying we got to be afraid of Trump. Trump's coming. Trump's coming. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here comes Trump. They motivate us to vote if we never get nothing when we do. Fear. Black people are the only constituency in this country who vote out of fear. In other words, I'm not voting to stop police brutality because they're not going to stop it. I'm not voting to change mass incarceration. They're not going to change it. I'm not voting to fix the schools. They're never going to fix them. So what you voting for? Because I'm afraid of what Trump might do. You see that? That's how we vote. Fear. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Jews go to the polls, when the Latinos go to the polls, when the Arabs, the East Indians, the Anglo-Saxons go to the polls, they're going for concessions. I'm getting something out of this vote. I'm and the thing is, no, no one's really getting anything from from the vote. Especially if you vote Democrat or Republican, that's that's the real truth. The real truth about electoral politics. Getting something that we already agreed upon before election day. Black people are getting nothing. We vote out of fear. Our motivation is fear. Joe Biden may do nothing for you, but Donald Trump will be worse. See how that works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how they get us out. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. black man is the only one in the voting line voting because he's scared yeah. Yeah. of what the other man might do. <laughs> other people got I would counter and say <clears throat> that it's everybody that's susceptible to the fear propaganda. We saw it in 2016 and in 2020. The fear works for everybody. I saw a lot of people from 2016 up until now as well coming in all various forms, no matter what generation they're part of, no matter what color of skin, being afraid of Donald Trump because everyone's saying he's the next Hitler. He is not. He is not. And it's important to let all of you know that we are all susceptible to fear. But the Democrats are in trouble because right now there is a lack of enthusiasm for the Democratic establishment. I want to pull up another video from Case Study QB. Another video here in regards to what the Democrats are right now going to face coming into this election cycle. But one thing that the Republican Party, and we were talking about this in the back, the advantage they have over, over Democrats and the White House and the DNC both need to wake up is by having this healthy, and I don't mean healthy in terms of ideas, but just competitive primary they're actually going to engage their base. They're going to register voters. They're going to have a voter enthusiasm advantage. And we're not really doing anything. Mm. I mean, we had a president who spoke late on a Friday night. We did pass an amazing piece of bipartisan le legislation again. We expect that. But we have to do more to build energy because right now in Iowa, I don't like Ron DeSantis saying woke every other word, but he's building excitement. Trump is building excitement. Pence, people are excited about it. I, I want to <laughs> you uh, again, it's 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 more than that. Also, remember, right now the Biden Harris administration failed a lot of voters. Okay, inflation is still a problem. Show of hands. In fact, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one, if you're doing financially well for yourself right now, that everything's fine. You're eating good. You got plenty of gas in your car. You go back and forth from work. Hell, you got money to go out in the town and live your best life. A type two, it's like, no, dude, it costs it costs money. It's expensive to go outside. I don't know how I'm going to make it till tomorrow. Full tank of gas, what's that? Dude, it costs $300 just to go outside. Hell no, inflation is a nightmare. Type two, if that's your answer. I just want to just build up a, you know, just, just describe how I know I'm feeling in this economy because this entire economic situation that we are in this country, people are struggling. Homeowners are losing their homes. Small businesses are being shut down. It's impossible to be a renter. I mean, the American dream is becoming a legend at this point. The kids are still in cages. Democrats, Democrats. You said you were going to return the soul back to America, but instead you're, Sucking the soul right out of so many Americans. And the thing is, Trump, to be honest here, and to a lesser extent, DeSantis, are able to build enthusiasm, whereas Biden and Harris do not show that confidence. And the only reason why they were able to get elected into office was because enough people were pressured and, vote and felt guilty and decided to support Biden because everyone's saying we got to stop Trump. Guess what? 
They tried to impeach Trump twice. Didn't work. Every single legal case that's been thrown at Trump, he's still running his campaign. So in other words, in other words, you're going to have to face him. And there's a very good possible, possibility chance that uh, possible chance. Sorry about that. I stuttered there. A very good chance that Trump can win the Republican nomination. It is what can happen. You worked for Bernie Sanders, who maybe was part of a dynamic on the Democratic side uh, four years ago that matched what Bakari is talking about on the Republican side. Well, when you think about President Biden, I agree with what Bakari is saying that, uh, you know, when he's staying behind a lectern and delivering an address on Friday night, that's not his strength. President Biden's strength is going out and talking to real people. Get him in a union hall, get him interacting with real people. He speaks like a normal American. He talks like you know, somebody you can understand. He's okay. We're going to rewind that again. Dynamic on the Democratic side uh, four years ago that matched what Bakari is talking about on the Republican side. Well, when you think about President Biden, I agree with what Bakari is saying that, <clears throat> uh, you know, when he's staying behind a lectern and delivering an address on Friday night, that's not his strength. President Biden's strength is going out and talking to real people. Get him in a union. Did you hear that? President Biden's strength is talking to real people. Talking to real people. Put him in a union hall. Yeah, because Biden's for the unions, right? To say that to the railroad uh, workers, right? Did you hear that again? Just, just want to play it again. Just one more time. One more time. Because this is how you, this is how you know CNN as a network is going under, and I love it. Uh. You know, when he's staying behind a lectern and delivering an address on Friday night, that's not his strength. President Biden's strength is going out and talking to real people. Get him in a union hall. Get him interacting with real people. He speaks like a normal American. He, he speaks like a normal American. Biden. D. Joe Biden. The one slurring and stammering, tripping over imaginary sandbags. That's 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 D. Joe Biden. The Joe Biden who told the story about Corn Pop. The Joe Biden who has to be handled in every which way when he's speaking to the press, given cheat cards, has to read from the podium real quickly, but, and then has to leave. Because when that old man is a talking, sooner or later, sooner or later, he's going to slip up. And once again, there will be another wonderful media gem out there. Of the whole world seeing the president of the United States acting like a senile old man. CNN, CNN. We know your network is dying and the ratings are in a crater. What, what, what are you trying to contribute to the conversation? I apologize just one more time because you have to hear the stupidity. President Biden, I agree with what Bakari is saying that, uh, you know, when he's staying behind a lectern and delivering an address on Friday night, that's not his strength. President Biden's strength is going out and talking to real people. Get him in a union hall. Get him interacting with real people. He speaks like a normal American. He talks like you know, somebody you can understand. He's not using D.C. lingo. But we, when's the last time that you can remember President Biden talking to a regular person off the cuff? Right? I mean, well, it, it's, and, and, okay, I mean, but he's president. It's yeah, you know, it's harder. Yeah. But, but now that Bakari's point the is now you're in a campaign. Yeah, 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 now you're in a campaign yeah. and the opportunities to interact with the South Carolinian and Iowan and New Hampshire are going to go up and we need to see more of those opportunities. Mark. So I think probably he, for, he forgot which president he was talking about. You know, Joe Biden, the president of the United States. So, yes, there are, and again, people want to see debates take place. Take, for example, here again, more people are calling for hashtag force the debate. Shout out to case study QB. This is a video clip from Fox News talking about people wanting to see a debate. Jack Dorsey replied to the video on Twitter, tweeting, quote, open the Democrat primaries and debates. This isn't fair to anyone. And I really resonate with what Dorsey's saying there. The President Biden has said to voters, watch me. He said that repeatedly. And the point obviously is if you watch what I do, you're going to gain confidence. But the truth is whether you're watching a press conference or you're watching him on stage, people are saying this president's not ready for this job. He's not prepared. He's not able to do what this job requires. And what Dorsey is saying is, Mr. President, you've got to go out there and prove it. You've got an added burden given what we've seen of you to go out there and show us you can do this job. But I think he knows, and I think Democrats know, he can't do that. Yeah, and I, listen, it doesn't bring joy to anybody's heart to see somebody fall and stumble on the stage in that way. It's actually a really sad thing. But, you know, you, I think about what other leaders around the world think when they see that. What does Xi Jinping 
think when he mm -hmm. sees the president falling like that? Does he think that he's, um, you know, an adversary that can take him on or does he think that he's weak? And, and unfortunately, that's the way that it appears. Um, and, and you have to worry about his stumbles verbally. And that's why he's not debating his mental fitness, his ability to really be able to serve the people of this country. I think what it comes down to is that, you know, he has had a long career of service, but it might be time to hang it up. Having said that, it doesn't seem like he Again, this is something everybody knows. Everybody knows this. Everyone is seeing it. Everybody knows that there's something wrong with President Joe Biden. He is showing signs of dementia, of Alzheimer's. If he gets reelected, he'll be the oldest sitting president in U.S. history at 86 years old. Now, this is not to be an insult to older people. OK, but the way our government is being handled right now, who people by people who are not mentally or physically fit right now is an embarrassment. Some of these politicians need to be helped. Case in point, Biden and also prime example, Dianne Feinstein. And yes, there are elder Republican statesmen, too. And I'm just going to say this to be consistent. All these politicians who are in their 80s need to go. They're in key positions of power and dictating policies that are making the rest of our lives miserable. These politicians are not fit for office. And Democrats, look, I get it. You told the world. You gave away the secret sauce. You did. You gave away the secret. You told everyone that you get to pick who the nominee is behind closed doors. But really, be honest, even corporate media can't shield it forever. The people are going to be talking about it. At every opportunity, Joe Biden's not fit to run. If he can't handle a debate against Marianne Williamson or RFK Jr., well, then good luck. Good luck. Seriously, you'll need it. Good luck. But, you know, hey, you guys get to make the decision on who's going to be the nominee. Just so you know, Kamala Harris's uh, approval rating is in the toilet, too. And there's nothing that K-Hive or Vote Blue, no matter do, who, can fix wants to because it kind of feels like this is somebody who's also sort of really enjoyed the power of the position mm. to a certain degree the privilege that it's brought his family as well um and he doesn't want to let go of that yeah and i also want to pull this up here as well again look folks as this stands you know biden is an embarrassment and while this will be for laughs i just want everyone to know that this is pretty embarrassing, seeing a president slurring and stammering, falling on stage. Yeah, there are people who can laugh at it. Okay, yeah. But at the end of the day, that's the leader of this country. Everyone should be upset at the fact that the Democrats are turning a blind eye to it, that they're allowing this to take place. <sighs> we live in a clown show. It's nothing more than a Saturday morning cartoon show. Madness and stupidity all around. But hey, we all deserve a laugh. So what better way to end this segment than to see a speech from Joe Biden himself? Because we all deserve a laugh. Even as the world is crumbling all around us. Case in point, this is just for jokes. But you know what? The fact that our president, our president is doing this and acting like a fool. If this is not evidence enough to break away from the two-party system, I don't know what is. So, hey, while the whole world's burning, let's at least enjoy a laugh from a parody. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. Where are those laughs coming from? An IHNA's ice cream, chocolate chip. Sounds like someone breaking in. It's just the storm, Barack. Sit down. I'm fighting zombies because I heard I would get chocolate chip ice cream. What the fuck is happening? By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not. God. Joe, take your meds. Oh, sorry, Elon. I forgot what time it was. Hopefully this storm passes soon. It's so dangerous. Agreed, Joe. So dangerous. <laughs> Ah, madness and stupidity all around. 
But there is also an update, too, uh, to this, because in regards towards uh, Jack Dorsey, former CEO of uh, Twitter, saying that he uh, wants to see a debate, he's also recently come out and said that he is going to endorse Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So let's go ahead and check this out here, too, and this will be the final video of this segment. Again, shout out to Case Study QB. If you're not following him on Twitter, please do so. Who co-founded Twitter, he posted it on a clip of it. You can see there, right underneath the arrow, the play button. Uh, he posted this on Twitter, and then he wrote at the top, he can and he will. And then people were asking, are you endorsing him? And he said, yes, I'm endorsing him. And then, then another user said the DNC will never allow Kennedy to become the nominee. And Dorsey wrote true, but they seem to be more irrelevant by the day. Right. So on Harris's show on Friday, uh, Bobby. So, Jack, listen, on the off chance you see this video, uh, no matter what, the DNC is going to pick who they want behind closed doors. There was already a legal case that set the precedent for that, and the whole world knows. Dem uh, everybody's quote-unquote favorite rebel leader, Bernie Sanders, not once but twice allowed the DNC to screw him up the wazoo. So, like I said, um, if you run in the Democratic Party and you're not willing to play ball with the DNC establishment, they are going to do everything they can to roadblock your campaign. So, again, to people supporting Marion Williamson's campaign or RFK Jr., um, don't invest too much of your time or financial resources into either of the two campaigns because the thing is the DNC is going to be that titan that's going to squash any form of rebellion, anyone that's going to step out of line with the neo against the neoliberal narrative. Kennedy said, I can and will beat Joe Biden. Uh, and so that's why Jack. And Trump and DeSantis. Right, exactly. That's why uh, at Jack said he can and he will. If you missed the clip on Friday, we're going to show it to you right now. Our internal poll numbers are showing me stronger against both Republican candidates than President Biden. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think when, you know, the more when that kind of when that kind of polling becomes public, that Democrats are going to want somebody who can beat Governor DeSantis and who can beat President uh, President Trump. And I don't think yeah, uh, I don't I'm not confident. I don't think anybody is confident that they have that President Biden. So I think that will persuade a lot of people. You know, and the other thing that would persuade a lot of people is he is from the most famous family in Democrat politics of our generation. And the Name generation before. There. So I want to stop it right here. All right. What can we take away from this entire segment? The Democrats cannot do damage control. The Democrats are struggling. The Democrats are incapable of really inspiring voter enthusiasm. What they are capable of doing is rigging the primary in their favor. And so they could shield and hide Biden as much as they want, but they cannot dismiss RFK Jr. They cannot dismiss Marion Williamson. They also cannot dismiss the fact that more and more Americans, and this is the case point, are identifying themselves as independents and are not falling for the old fear tactics. Look, I get that Donald Trump triggers everyone's lizard brain. I get it. But if you're going to have a weak candidate and he's going to be struggling against somebody like Trump or DeSantis, well, Democrats, Democratic establishment, you deserve the embarrassment that you're about to receive because when you have somebody who is that unfit mentally and physically, you deserve to take the L.